Finally, Apple Intelligence is here, at least the first version of it to the entire public, and it's now on your iPad, depending on which one you have. But let's talk about every new feature you're getting with iPadOS 18.1 and what I think you should try out first. Let's get into it. So quick PSA before we get started, I wanted to bring up which iPads will be supporting Apple Intelligence, and that's going to be any M-powered iPad, so we're talking M1, M2, and M4 iPad Pro, as well as the brand new A17 Pro iPad Mini, and outside of that, no other iPad will support the Apple Intelligence features. There are some features that aren't Apple Intelligence related that I will be touching on as well, and I'll let you guys know which one those are, because if your iPad supports 18.1 in general, you'll get those features as well, like the AirPods Pro hearing test and things of that nature. But now, let's jump right into Apple Intelligence and some of the fun things you should try out. Well, all right, everyone, let's hop right into this. And of course, I'm gonna mention that I am using a brand new M4 iPad Pro. So this is technically the latest and greatest and should be the most well-equipped to run things like Apple Intelligence. But we're gonna jump right into Apple Intelligence and what that looks like. The first thing you're gonna need to do once you first install 18.1, whether you're on iPad OS, iOS, or Mac OS Sequoia, is you're gonna wanna go into your settings. From there, you're gonna have a brand new menu down here on the left-hand side called Apple Intelligence and Siri. So by default, it will be turned off. You're gonna to wanna to turn this on and you'll be by default put into a wait list. Now, we don't know how long that's gonna take. I've been hearing people that it's been taking a little while for them. So it really depends on what Apple ends up doing. For me personally, when I was running the beta, it only took about 10 minutes and then I was pulled in right to Apple Intelligence. So that's something to take into consideration. But once that's turned on, you will get a notification that you are now in Apple Intelligence and you're ready to start using it. And then in terms of some settings to really take into account, the first and only real one that I wanna kinda of bring up is gonna be the talk and type to Siri. So this one's gonna be what you're gonna say in order to initiate that, right? So if I just wanna say Siri, then it's gonna bring it up and I can choose this option, I can do the hey blank, or I can leave it turned off. And there's also a brand new way to interact with Siri, which would be being able to double tap on this home bar. So if I tap twice here, I'll be able to actually type to Siri. And of course I have a magic keyboard on right now. That's why you don't see the keyboard pop up. But if I didn't have the magic keyboard, you'd be able to type to Siri exactly what you would want to type versus actually saying it out loud. So, so those are the new ways to interact with Siri by default. And I know people are gonna ask me about this ChatGPT integration. This is for 18.2. I just happen to be running 18.2 right now in the beta program, but 18.1 will not have this ChatGPT situation. So the first new thing you're gonna see is that you're gonna be able to get the new Siri animation by holding this down or saying its name, and you'll be able to interact with Siri and get some better context rules overall. Now, when it comes to how smart it really is, Again, it's pretty much the same thing as it was with 18.0, just with some simple initial steps that you can continue having conversations with it. So for instance, what's the weather today? Now, what's the weather in Miami? Could you navigate me to Miami from Bayonne? And then you can see that it's actually pulling up Apple Maps and guiding me all the way to Miami from Bayonne. Some other interesting Siri ones are gonna be being able to explain things all at once. So for instance, how do I turn on dark mode? So as you can see here, it's gonna tell me exactly step by step, a tutorial of how to actually set up dark mode. And that's gonna be the same thing for pretty much any setting and any how to that's built into the system already. So that's all brand new. And then of course you can have it actually toggle it off and on. Toggle dark mode off. Toggle dark mode on. So those are some simple examples of the new Siri. Again, from a smartness standpoint, not too much has changed. It's now just looks a little bit better and you can interact with Siri in multiple ways. So now let's get into the notes application and start talking about writing tools because this is where it's gonna be really beneficial, especially if you're somebody that already uses things like summarizations and uses other AI tools to kind of rewrite current text. And this is gonna be across your entire operating system. So it's not just for the notes application, this will work in your iMessage, in the mail application, anywhere that you can implement text, this is gonna work. But in the notes application, for instance, you do have this little Siri button up here, which is another way that you can interact with Siri in terms of writing tools. And you can see when I tap on here, you're gonna be able to get this writing tools menu. What you're gonna be able to see is this portion right here, the describe your change and the compose. Unfortunately, that's for 18.2, but you are able to proofread, rewrite, change the tone to friendly, professional, or concise, and then even summarize key points, make lists, and even make tables of whatever text you're using and highlighting. So for instance, if I wanna highlight this, you can see that I also have the menu options down here. So if I click on this right here, I wanna actually just proofread this. You can see that it's being highlighted in that rainbow color. It's gonna be proofread, and then you can see that it's all done in proofread. And on the bottom, you see a summarization of zero changes. We'll press done, and you can bring it up for the entire thing. So if I wanna, let's say, Control A, highlight everything, 
use the Apple Intelligence button, let's change the tone to friendly. It's gonna slowly do all that for a second. You can see it's loading up. We're following everything that it's doing. And then little by little in real time, it is changing for us. And you can see that it's changing to friendly. You can kind of take a read at it and see that it did change friendly, or you can just revert it to how it was before very easily. And these writing tools, as I mentioned, are gonna work across your entire operating system. So if you wanna go into, let's say your mail application, let's go to mail, open this up. Let's say you wanna compose something new. You can see that I put this right here and I actually wanna make this sound a little bit more formal. I'll press the little Apple intelligence button. I want it to be a little bit more professional and then it'll change it to hello, would you be interested in having dinner instead of saying hello, let's do dinner and then you can send it off. So you can see that it can be used across all different applications. And then since we are in the mail app, what's nice is that there's actually a summarize button up here for your mail application. So you tap summarize and it'll give you a summarization of everything that's in that email. So you can see that there's a comment on here and it'll even look at the actual image that's been embedded in the email to then see exactly what's being said and what to look forward to moving forward. So that's where I think this update shines. It's gonna be in the summarization features, if anything. The next one I'm gonna bring up is going to be notification summaries. And I absolutely love this because it's able to give you the essence of let's say a bunch of notifications or a bunch of messages very simply and very easily. So you can see down here that I have 60 total Redfin notifications from this one application. And you can see that all those 60 notifications are now being summarized into just two or three lines. So you can see that Bungalow Circle and Hickson Recommended, Fishtown Townhome Drop Prices, New Colonial Home in Mount Olive Township. So those are all different notifications. And if you tap on here, then you get the actual notifications. Now this is extremely useful if you're somebody that's in a bunch of different group chats. And let's say maybe 10 messages come in at once, you'll get the, the essence of it with these notification summaries. And this is gonna work on every single application. So as long as there's at least two notifications from one application, you'll start to begin to get summaries in the notifications tab. And then finally, in that same light, if we go into our settings, one of my favorite new features is gonna be this new default focus mode called reduce interruptions. So reduce interruptions is introduced with 18.1, giving you a way to kind of let Siri and let Apple intelligence figure out what they deem important and what they deem not important. So the only thing that I personally added is to make sure that my wife can reach me no matter what, everything else I'm leaving it up to Siri. And for the most part, it really does help out and it really does reduce all the interruptions and it makes you kind of hone in and focus in this focus mode without you needing to go into each individual focus mode and let it know, you know, which application can reach out to you, which person can, who can call you, who can text you. So let reduce interruptions figure it out by itself. And so far it's been very good. All right, so let's continue on with some of these Apple intelligence features, but now we're going to the photos application. So the first thing you're gonna notice in any photo is when you go into edit, there's a brand new button on the left-hand side or depending on how you're holding your iPad, but it's gonna be the cleanup feature. Now this is similar to what some competitors have had for a while and you can see that it is rendering in real time, but basically what it allows you to do is remove objects from a certain image. So if I wanna completely remove myself from this image, I just go around, kind of do a rough circle around myself. It's gonna highlight me in that rainbow kind of animation and then poof, I'm gone just like that. So I think in this image, for instance, it worked perfectly, it was easy. If you really kind of zoom in here, you can kind of see that there isn't really anything abnormal about this image now, even though I was removed. And if I, let's say we wanna remove the entire car, it's gonna highlight the car and see what that looks like. See, this one was a little bit broken because of the fact that the car is a subject of the image. So I'm gonna undo that, but you can see how that could work and how beneficial that could be. And the next thing I wanna show you, which is something Apple really hasn't advertised, is if you zoom into a face, for instance, and this is a great way to kind of blur faces out. If let's say you take a picture with your family and you have small children, they don't really wanna post on social media, you can just circle somebody's face If I zoom out, you can see that my face is totally blurred and you can't actually make out what my face looks like. So I think that's a great feature that's built into the cleanup tool and built directly into the photos application that you can now start to play with and see exactly what gets removed and what doesn't. And as you might notice, it works best when you're removing objects that aren't the main subject of the image. Now staying in the photos application, we have a brand new feature called create a memory movie. The photos application has been able to create movies on its own for the last couple of years. And it's been one of my favorite things because it gets you a little nostalgic to see exactly what we've been doing maybe a year or two ago but now you can create your own movie based on whatever prompt you wanna give it. So if you wanna do maybe, I'm gonna type in ice cream with Fiona, I'm gonna send it through, and what it's doing, it's gonna pull all the images from my photo library that kind of match this query, and then put together a little movie with some background music to then kind of show it off to me after the fact. And then you can save this as a video, save all the images separately, share it as is, and again, it's giving you the title and then it starts playing. And you can easily scroll through these to kind of pick which ones you want. You can tap in here to see what songs are playing, which photos are being chosen. You can give feedback if you want to. So I really like this feature to create your own and then you can create again. So start to play with this to see exactly what ends up happening. And in my opinion, it does make for some awesome memories. 
And the last thing that was added into 18.1 in the Photos app is gonna be the ability to search with better natural language inside the Photos application. So if I search up walking my dog, you can see that there are a couple pictures of me walking my dog here. As you can see, here I am with my Vision Pro. So it's not gonna be able to accept more natural language overall. And that pretty much runs the gamut in terms of Apple intelligence features that we will be getting with the M-powered iPads and the A17 Pro iPad mini. But some other smaller things that everybody's gonna get is gonna be the ability to revamp your control center. So with 18.0, we did get a revamp control center, but now we get a whole new menu option and a whole new page, which is gonna be all for connectivity. So this one is gonna be at the very, very bottom. And of course you can rearrange it the way that you see fit, but we do have toggles now directly for Wi-Fi, AirDrop, and you can just tap in here to then make a decision on exactly what you wanna choose, which I think makes it a lot easier to interact from a connectivity standpoint. And then also in that same light with Control Center, if we go into our settings and then go to Control Center, we now have the ability to reset Control Center. So if you did make a lot of changes, but you wanna start fresh and go back to what Apple wants from a factory standpoint, you can just reset Control Center and it'll all go back to normal. And then last but not least, we have to talk about AirPods Pro Gen 2. So you need to have AirPods Pro Gen 2 in order for this to work. And it's gonna be the fact that we can now use them as a hearing aid, which is kind of unheard of and kind of insane. So in order to do this, make sure your AirPods are connected and you have to have the AirPods Pro Gen 2, either the Lightning or the USB-C version, but you tap into your AirPods setting and then there's gonna be a whole new hearing health section here. And we should have already posted a video on what this exactly looks like, but basically go ahead and take a hearing test, see where your hearing stats are, and then you're able to use your AirPods Pro for light and moderate hearing loss in order to kind of help amplify that. So I think the value and the price you can get AirPods Pro Gen 2 at is so much better and so much accessible than an actual hearing aid, which can go for thousands of dollars. So kudos to Apple for getting FDA approval on that and now giving you basically a hearing aid in your pocket, which can be used whether or not you are actually hard of hearing. But that is pretty much it when it comes to the, all the AI features and everything with 18.1. I do wanna quickly bring up battery life because I've been running the 18.1 beta for over a month now. And if you go down to battery life, you can get an idea of what I've been getting on a brand new iPad. So yesterday, for instance, we got five hours of screen on time, three hours of screen off time, and it took up about 100% of that battery. On a day like here, we got four hours of screen on time with about 60% usage. So it really varies, but I will say overall, I've been getting great battery life even when I am using it all day with some more intensive tasks and applications. So overall, I think you shouldn't need to worry when it comes to optimization of the battery life, unless you have maybe an M1 iPad Pro or something a little bit older where the battery life is already getting a little bit on the older side. But let's finish up this video, everybody, and let me know with a comment down below what your favorite AI feature is, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And that will just about do for this video, everybody. As you saw, Apple Intelligence, at least the first version, is finally here. There are some cool new updates, like the new animation for Siri that makes it at least feel a little bit newer. Even though not much has really changed compared to the regular 18.0, the 18.2 version of Siri will be astronomically better, so definitely stay tuned for that towards the end of this year. But there were some awesome Apple Intelligence features outside of that, like the writing tools, all the stuff in the Photos application, and then a bunch of other stuff that we mentioned earlier in the video. So leave a comment down below what your favorite new Apple intelligence feature is. If you even have one at this point, have you tried it out? Have you installed it onto your current iPad? Let me know in the comment down below. But if you made it to the end of this video, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below as well so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys wanna watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video and I think you're gonna like this video down here. Maybe watch that 18.2 video because there's some awesome stuff coming. But that'll do it. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody.